There's another one that's a that I made. I think I got it for twenty-five dollars. My hands stick to this foam, but you get an idea what it looks like. Uh, CZ red, white. It's got a ruby sim stimulant. Simulant. Uh, usually, this one I try to play around with the camera a little bit. Still trying to get a hang of this stuff, but uh, so I guess I got to move this this way, and this is like fifteen bucks too. Uh, mainly the reason they're so cheap it's uh, stuff that I practice on and then I got a choice I could try to sell them and uh, recover the cost for the material and or uh, or not so anyway that's the setup there again uh, just Playing around here. Uh, recovering prices. Cheap. Mainly. And uh, that said, uh, there's so there's that one available for 15 bucks. And then here's another one that I did. Uh, I had it down at Colette's for a while, but I brought it home to kind of shine it up. A lot of that stuff, if it sits there, uh, it oxidizes, and uh, it oxidizes and uh, you know tarnishes. It's not fine silver, but it's 92.5. So this one here is a CZ's uh, around the side of it. You can see there's, you know, you can count them. I'd probably say there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 CZ there. So uh, there's 19 cubic. Cubic zirconia. Oh. And uh, one, one uh, red coral. Coral. That red coral I had around. Uh, I bet you I had it. Well, I had it when I started, when I was teaching at Valley High School in Gilchrist. And uh, I had a couple of branches that I picked up uh, from a friend. And it was, I think it was a Krieger art store that was out there on the sound. And uh, so I did, I used them pretty sparingly because uh, Red Coral is pretty expensive.
And the other thing that's kind of interesting is that uh, all this stuff, I've been practicing setting CZs for, for quite a while. And uh, maybe I've set, uh, maybe I've set maybe a thousand stones, mostly CZs. Mostly CZs. And uh, that said, that's available for 25 bucks. Uh, you can pretty much see what it looks like. Uh, backside uh, is where the holes went through the loop. That holds that uh, nice little chain. And then this is one of the other ones that I've been working on. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, you can see what it looks like. It's a big piece of uh, silver. That's a rutilated quartz. And you can see through it. So if you, you know, put it under the light, uh, you could see uh, the light through the stone. I'll give you an idea. Anyway, that's that's also available, and that's a. Uh, one that I was working on quite a quite a while ago, and uh, that said, that one is like a shadow box, and you know a lot of times I just have to decide what what I want to do for the design, and uh, and go from there. Uh, so again, I'll just go through them backwards. Uh, that one's available if you're interested. This is the last one I showed you. That's a piece of red coral, the CZs. And you know, kind of gives you a play of the light, how the light works on, on the CZs. You could put real sapphires if you wanted real sapphires. This one too, the way, gave, the way the light kind of plays on it. Uh, this is the other one. This is green chrome diopside. It's just a nice piece of green uh, rock. It's probably a CZ, actually. I don't remember. A lot of times I can't keep up. I forget what I have. And then this is, uh, like I told you before, this is uh, is uh, what you see right there. It kind of sparkles with the the light, and Okay, uh, I'm just sending some text to myself to make sure that I'm interacting and everything's getting out pretty good. Uh, I have a lot of controls to play with here and I just, I'm still getting a handle of things. Uh, one of the things that's nice about some of this stuff is uh, like right here, this is a, a light source that I have available. 
And, uh, you know, it's just uh, so make, make things a little bit better to view. Uh, this is a set of Navajo pearls that I had out there that I did uh, quite a while back. It was a two-year project uh, on and off. By that, you know, I'd start, I'd start a project and then I, I'd jump around and uh, try something different. And uh, just like now, playing with the, the software, I'm flipping around through the screens. Uh, this piece that you see there is a video a photograph that I shot of a, of a pendant that I made and sold last summer. I think it was spring, Colette sold it for me. And it went for a good price. And it's a lot of silver and a lot of work. Time consuming. I think anybody that likes doing uh, silversmithing or stuff like that, you you can buy the beads, of course, made, but you'll pay, you know, a few bucks for them. And then these beads are, are pretty good size. They're uh, bigger than a quarter. Just under, yeah, pretty good size. And uh, I had a lot of fun making this. And of course, it's sold. But uh, I'm going to plan on making another one. Uh, probably wait till summer where it's nicer in the garage and I can fuss out there. Uh, this is uh, what you see on that I'm projecting for you to see. But I can also go to uh, some other pages that I have out there to show you. Uh, well, I got this set up here, so I can just put a but push a button, and uh, there you'll see uh, this web page. And these are all the links I can go to. But this this page right here uh, is something that. Uh, it's just fun to do, and it's learning the, how to use the software. And a lot of trouble with the software is uh, I, I forget how to use it. And so, like right now, I can go ahead and uh, add oops, I can add a camera to this uh, that I have on screen and it's kind of fun because a lot of this stuff I kind of forget how to use but with a little patience you can see uh, that I'll, I'll be here on the screen kind of behind the scene uh, this is another camera that I have set up that I can play around with uh, I can adjust it. Uh, pretty easy by coming over here and uh, doing stuff like that. Just like anything, it takes a takes a while to get a handle on it. And then some of the other things I can do is I can uh, sometimes I can just crop things down and then move the whole picture someplace else out of sight and real small. So you, you see what's going on right there. Now, this is my web page that, uh, that I just <laughs> lost. Let me, let me load it back up again. But getting back to the, the Navajo pearls, you know, you get the idea. I have a lot of stuff going on at the same time. Uh, put this over here. And then uh, when I jump back over to this screen, this should load up where, uh, let's say I could show. show this page again it will load up and this is my web page that's out there and uh, as soon as this centers up here uh it comes up 
on your screen, this is uh, my web page, and I say point this way. It should come up on this side if I did everything right. Uh, let's see. So that's the camera there. This is a video here that should come up pretty soon. And you can see that uh, kind of here in the bottom corner of the video. And what you see is uh, is this uh, web page of mine. There she goes, she popped up. There's a little lag. Uh, and then I'll go show you some of my other work I have out there. Uh, when you click on this, you'll see, see that happen. These are some of the jewelry uh, that I have down there at Colette Pictures Art Showcase that I just showed you. Uh, that's some of the CZs I set. Some of these have stuff on the back and the front. And I can zoom in on it. And you can uh, see a little bit more information about the artist. Uh, you can actually zoom in. You know, and that's some other stuff I have on there that's on Facebook. So let me go back one. Okay, I go back. I can flip through my stuff online like that. And that's some more works that I have uh, that's available that you can see. And it's the one I just showed you. It's, it's, I'm selling it for what I have in silver and, and the materials only cover the time that I have in it. But that said, uh, a lot of times after a couple of years, if you don't sell any, melting them down or, or, or whatever. Uh, so I'm pretty lucky in that sense that uh, I can do that. So I can flip across here. I showed you that one. That one again is during silver. <coughs> And they, I got that on sale right now for, I think I said 25 bucks. Oh no. The tag says, oh, I think I had it on my web page for 25 bucks. Right here, I got, 50, says 15 bucks. So, you know, you never know. You jump on that. <laughs> Uh, here's some more stuff. Uh, those are down at Colette's Art Showcase. That's uh, that's uh, Amethyst. Amethyst that's out there. Uh, that's Black CZs. And uh, that said, I just typed another little message. So if that's you, you know, say hi. Uh, here's another one. These, these are down at Colette's. And I bought those at a, a gym show out there in Denver at that, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the building. Maybe I, I got it under this information. Maybe it'll come up. Uh, but uh, these are Ethiopian opals. And, you know, you can zoom in like that. That's some others that are out there on... Uh, 
the internet. This is eBay. This is eBay. And if you go to those sites and look how much they are, some of them are uh, man-made. Some of them are imitation. Some of them are what they call duplets. Mine's a tr uh, solid Ethiopian opal. Whereas the Australian black opals I have are, uh, are a triplet, they're, they're three layers, uh, three. My fingers are working up there. That's a, that's a, that's kind of funny because this camera, if I do that, sometimes it'll, it'll zoom. Or not. But, uh, <laughs> So these here are all uh, variations of opals. There's a black opal, 18 karat. I tap on that, that side opens up and you can see that sound, you know, for that price. Uh, that's what's kind of fun about this, this software here is, you know, here's, uh, here's some other ones. These are white fire. Let's see what those are going for. Oh. Those are lab created. They're man made. They're they're pretty cheap. Oh, 115 bucks. Whoa. Uh, so get back to my page. And uh, see how I close that. That's a piece of jade. Uh, a piece of jade that uh, I got from Wyoming. Had that for a long time. And uh, you can kind of see how I, I, I jump dip on it so you can see a little closer. Uh, these are the, the prongs. Uh, some are just bezel set. And what you're seeing right here is... Uh, set in sterling silver it's a prong setting uh, just like the other ones I showed you some are prong settings uh, pave is a little this the, the uh, surface of the silver is completely solid uh, paved is, is is what it means oh look at something else I've got here that's the one I showed you that's going uh, I think I said uh, yeah, that's 25. That's 25. And uh, again, on my website, you can, you know, sometimes get a, a larger image like this. And uh, I'll go back and go to some other stone. And that's sitting down there at Colette Pictures Art Showcase. And It's hand engraved. This is the money clip that I had down there. And then I thought, oh, I should keep it. So there's a, let's see if I can, if this will zoom in any. So. That's my money clip. That you see right there online. Uh, so there's another one. Uh, that's the same as the painting that I've done. I have a painting that I've worked on. I'll show you that after a while. I did that a variation of that trout, and uh, there you see it. Uh, that one, I believe, is being sold as a piece of related quartz set in uh, copper. And uh, these copper bracelets, I made some on commission for some uh, person I know is Julie. And she was one of my art teachers that I took for acrylic painting. 
And these are also some that I have sitting down at Colette's. I call them fire polished. You heat them with the torch and, and they'll go from blue to greens. Sometimes you even get a little red in there. Uh, this is a shell I picked up from Hawaiian. It's down there at Colette's. Pretty reasonable. Let's see, five bucks. Uh, these are Opihi shells, and the Opihi shells, I got them in Okinawa and Hawaii, and they're a limpet that, that the local people eat. And, you know, like you eat clams or uh, mussel or stuff like that, oysters. Uh, they're available down there at Colette's. They're beautiful shells, they're very light and a little work to polish them. So you've seen all these already. I'm just going to go through them fast. I'm going to close that. Go down here to some more artwork. I'll show you some of my, my paintings and stuff that I have. These are also available uh, here at home. Uh, some of them I, I, I sold. The robin's still available, and uh, I kind of like to look at them this way. If I click on the link, then this way, uh, and this was something I did in, in an art class. Uh, when I say an art class, I was uh, taking a Zoom class from Colette Pictures Art Showcase and working at home, and. Uh, Just for the fun of it, I'm going to add another camera in here. Because this, this stuff, if I don't use it, I, I lose it. That makes sense. So this is my other camera. This is that camera. So I can go ahead and shut off that camera, which... I'll label it as being, uh, I have a thing on my software that I rename it uh, my OBS. Bot camera. And this is all stuff that keeps me busy. So, you know, you get the idea. That, you know, this is me playing around again. And uh, this right here go to the next slide. And that, that was a, actually a watercolor. The only thing about it was that I put a clear coat lacquer, and I really don't like that. But uh, I can also print it on. Uh, watercolor paper and it comes out a little comes out a little bit different uh, it looks it looks better on the water colored paper with no coating I have this one that I've done it's available uh, made the frame for it also I think you might like it uh, give me a holler uh, more information this, this is just stuff that in the software I can add stuff to this and what's really kind of cool it shows you what it look like in your room so let's say that's your living room and uh, you can also look at it uh, This gives you a choice here. You can say, let's say you want to see what it looks like in your uh, your above a small shelf. You know, I uh, don't quite have this figured out yet, but you get the idea.
Uh, another one that I have, it's in a frame, 20, 20 by 16. It's also available. And again, if there is anybody out there watching, I'm just uh, learning how to use the software. And uh, the other day I, I posted some stuff, but I just didn't spend the time that I should. Uh, some dry runs with the software. So I found out that if I have things, uh, you know, I, I go through it a few times and I kind of remember what I'm supposed to do, if that makes sense. Uh, this one I like. Uh, and I, I spent a lot of time on this one. This one, I it started out as a class project and it was a painting that I took down in, I think it was Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, this is a link here. I show you that I worked on this on my iPad using a software called Procreate. And uh, these are two places that I have artwork. That one's at Colette. Uh, that's at, at uh, Fine Arts America, and yeah, Fine Arts America. And then the other place I have is at Colette Pictures Art Showcase. Uh, is mainly my jewelry. Oh yeah, this is a painting that I did. It was uh, plain air. I'll go flip over there. That was a plain air that we did one day. Oh, it says Centennial Village. And uh, that was a group of us from the Greeley Art Association that went out and shared what we were doing. Well, it looks like nobody's watching out there. They must be eating dinner or watching TV. Well, that's okay. This will be out there. I think I, this original, I still, no, I sold that one, but I have another one that's like uh, the fisherman's on the other side. And I'm looking around the corner, it has a, a red shirt. I'm not sure if I have it here. This is a watercolor I did years ago in Hawaii when I was uh, in Okinawa when I was teaching art, just right, just before I retire. Uh, this one I did with Colette Pitcher. It's a small print. It's available. Uh, this one is an oil set paint, uh, heat set. Uh, my first class that I think I took took with Colette was on doing some stuff like this with a heat set oils, which is pretty cool. Um, then you heated them with a with a uh, a heat dryer. And uh, I still have that one. If you're interested. This one's framed and that's the original that's for sale. Uh, it's an acrylic painting. This one I took from a friend, uh, art teacher, uh, Julie, Julie Eckhart, I think it was. She's on Facebook too, but this one I did in her class. This is an acrylic. She supplied all the materials. Uh, it was fun painting. It's from, uh, a magazine picture, I think, that she printed out. This is the other one that I have right now that's still available. It's not framed, but it's acrylic on hardboard. I think you're interested. Uh, these paintings, some of these paintings were done real quick. They were done in, in, in the studio. And uh, I really enjoyed taking those classes from Julie. 
I might even be able to show you her if I jump over here. See if that comes up, you know. I'll see if Julie comes up. No. Maybe I don't know how to do it, but anyway, we'll jump back to here. So this is available. It's 10 and a half by 11 and three quarter. It's on acrylic, so you don't need glass. Um, pretty much what you see. And uh, this is another watercolor experiment we were doing in class. We just took a piece of a watercolor paper and uh, divided it into fours of masking tape and then experiment it with the, with the paints. Here's another one. Uh, hibiscus. No, not hibiscus. Uh, I don't remember what they're called. Flower. This one, I think still available. Yeah, it's still available. I did that with Julie uh, in class. And that was fun doing. That was fun. That was a fun one to do. Also, the thing about that is, uh, that was a a watercolor. And this is a print. You can see right here what, I, what I've done. Let's see if I can do this. You can see. That. Uh, little one six by ten, but I did. And I think I have an eight by ten print. So if you think you're interested in a print. They're pretty reasonable, but the original is 50 bucks. And, uh, you know, if you like it, great. Let me know. This one was one I did with Colette. This is another one I did with Colette. That's, I uh, can't remember the name of it, but we went to that park. It's a beautiful park. Uh, another one, study with Colette, we did. That one was one of those heat oil, uh, you had to heat set the oil. And uh, that was kind of fun. And I'm just playing around here. See if anybody comes up. This is the, the software that I'm playing with. So I can, you know, I can move this stuff around. I could set it in the picture. It's all fun. It's all good work. So this one is available if you think you like it. Uh, oh no, wait a minute. I sold that. I sold that. Sold that at a garage sale. <laughs> By garage sale, I mean, I was the only one that had my garage door open and every day when I go out and work in the summer. And one year I was painting uh, during the Zoom class out in my garage while taking Colette's class. You know. um, somebody in the neighborhood stopped by, saw that and bought it. So I was just tickled. And this was that Robin you saw the very first one. This is how that painting started out. We were all doing this in the class. So this was a metamorphosis of a robin, you know. Uh, this robin you see now, this robin chain, this, this uh, subject, I changed it quite a bit. And that's on my web page. That's the very first one I showed you. And uh, that was a 
Colette had a photo that she took or somebody in the class took and they shared it. We we're using a, a masking fluid, a masking frisket to do layers of uh, straw, the, the bird nest, the birds nesting stuff. And with this, I uh, didn't really like it, so I kept changing and changing, but I was taking photographs of my artwork uh, while I was painting. So I had all the different stages. That's, And then some of the stuff I would take a picture, uh, I'd pull it in on my iPad and play with it on the iPad, which was fun, fun to do. Um, this one was one I did uh, when I was teaching art in uh, Okinawa. This is painting with the tray paints with the kids. Uh, we used tray paints. Uh, they were the cheapest to work with, and they work. They work great. And the idea was kids to do washes and experiment with just wet into wet, or dry into wet, or you know, experiment. And so that's what I titled it. Uh, and I'm sure you've probably seen some of those things that people uh, in, in the desert, when they do wind sailing out there, it's pretty cool. This one, same thing, did that with the kids. And the idea was for them to bring their photograph of a fish. And uh, this was a clown fish saltwater fish, they stay in the sea anemones. This was one that was just made up. I think I did that in class, uh, showing the kids. This one I think I did with Colette. Uh, she had a photograph of a butterfly, I believe. This was another one of those oil set paints, heat set paints. This was another, I think, a watercolor experiment. We're back to that robin again. That I told you metamorphed to this. Uh, so that said, see where this takes me. Okay, this is some of my jewelry designs. I might have shown you. Uh, oh, yeah, I did. I already showed you this. So let's go back and see what I got. This might be some of the same stuff. But this was a, a watch band that I made, one for Gail and one for me. Uh, I don't wear it, neither does Gail. She doesn't wear hers either. But uh, that's that one, Sterling Silver. I actually made these when I was teaching at Valley High School. Started teaching at Valley, I think, in 1972. Yeah, 72. And that's when I made those, 72, 73, 74. Uh, this is that pendant I was showing you earlier, a different view of it. I made the chain, I made all the the cylinders, pearls, 
Navajo pearls, and I call them Navajo pearls because that's what the Navajos call them. Shows you, I put that on there because it's too hard to engrave the uh, other stuff. And that sold at Colette's Art Showcase. On, uh, I don't know, I had the number one on there because I did some different variations of stringing them together. I was curious to see if anybody was uh, had an opinion. Uh, that, that's the homemade clasp. Just a, you know, a hook that I think I... try to jump in on. These were stuff that I, when I first retired, I was doing a lot of um, just tumbled stones that I tumbled. Some were cabochons, cabochons. Uh, this, these I were castings that I did. I took a class from a teacher that I found online. His name is Don, Don Norris. Don Norris, he was a retired industrial arts teacher. He used to have a, a facility, uh, had a store up in uh, Estes Park. And uh, he was teaching classes out of his home. Uh, he ended up moving out of uh, Estes Park because the altitude was bothering him and his wife. And since then, he went mobile, moved to Arizona or someplace in his teaching. This was my first display down at Colette's Art Showcase. A lot of this stuff, some of this stuff is still there what you see right here. Uh, but now it's in a, in a case. This was some uh, Lightning Ridge Black Opals that I, actually I made them and a friend ended up picking them out. She liked them. And a real good friend, so. That, oh no, I still have this set. I have this set. It's a black opal triplets. Again, these black opal triplets uh, are available. You might want to pick them up. Uh, these two, if you go look online and you go look at other ones that are online, you can see the gamut of the prices on these things. Uh, some for man-made and some are uh, natural. Uh, they're really beautiful. So that said, these are stuff that I had on Pinterest I was looking at, but these are here available if you're interested, let me know. Some of you might watch this later on. Some of you might not. This has since been sold, but that was red coral in each eye. I cast these when I took a class from uh, this Don Norris. And I still have some wax models, but I just haven't got around to casting. It took quite a few years for these to finally sell. And... Uh, This one, I made this when I was teaching at Valley High School. Uh, gave that to my brother uh, when he was here one year. Sterling silver. These are some more castings. And I think these are all sold except for maybe the Punisher. The Punisher still might be down in. Colette's art showcase. That has been sold. Or maybe I gave it as a gift. But this is hand engraved with the CZ uh, turquoise. This copper ring actually finally sold at one of the church 
bizarre fairs. I was pretty tickled. This was all made from scrap copper that I had. A friend gave to me this jack, uh, electrician I know, and so I hand forged it. These are down at Colette's. These is turquoise that I got at Tonopah. Went to Tonopah, took a class, and went through the tailings in a mine down there, Battle Mount. And then I tumbled them. And then these are some of the beads that I made. And this is on some uh, what they call a rat foxtail wire. And then again, you might be able to go look at these on uh, different kinds and designs that are out there on uh, Pinterest or Etsy. Get ideas. That's still down at Colette's. Uh, that one might have been sold as a piece of tiger eye, Bezel Mount, Gavishon. Down at Colette's. Down at Colette's. That one. Uh, I dropped it and broke the, the uh, glass. Bummer. I think that's been sold down at Colette's. That one I still have. And actually, I made that when I was teaching at Valley High School. I got the date, 1970. And actually, it was 71. These... Uh, when I first start selling them, that's the way I was packaging them. Some of them are still in Colette's, and I, some of these have already been sold. Uh, I did a lot of the the Bronco head, the Mustang head, that's uh, down there. That's the Punisher ring. It still might be down there. And I have some more of those to cast, but I just haven't got to it. You've seen those, you've seen those. So I think I'm going back through the, the cycle of everything that I did. Actually, I still have this ring available, if anybody's interested in it. Uh, copper was all from salvage copper that I melded and rolled. And that's a chunk of uh, natural amethyst and it's rutilated if you look at it in a microscope you see the the uh, the uh, impurities in it this I think still down at Colette's engraving again uh, that's been sold that one's still available that shows you the what I'm talking about this is a uh, lightning ridge black opal uh, it's a triplet so there's three layers to it uh, some of these I, I try to add it under information but I guess it didn't it didn't work so that's still available if you think you're interested good price you've seen those so I think I'm going back to the cycle. So that's where we started. And then uh, going back to my works, let's see what else I got left. Jewelry, uh, these are my digital paintings that I want to share with you. So if you're out there looking, I talked your head off. These are available out there. Uh, this is just a collection of all the stuff that I photographed and put in a collage. This was done with Procreate. Uh, this is something I had fun doing. Uh, again, you might want to look at it. Maybe you don't, maybe you do. Yeah, so these are all my uh, comments. Uh, this is done with Procreate. Again, you can zoom in. And these are stuff that other people did. 
uh, I, uh, for some reason, because when I uploaded them to, to uh, Pinterest, I, sh I share that link. Again, this is done on Procreate, all from memory. I stayed up at night, just, just having fun. This one I did on Procreate, and this one, uh, the frame one sold at uh, what they call, uh, it was a quick draw, a rotary club. Uh, and Colette asked some of us to, if we'd paint there, and we did. This one I have is a digital print. You can get it any place from a five by seven to a thirty, a twenty-four by or sixteen by twenty, if you want. Again, I drew this on the computer and just made it up as I went. Just learning how to use the program. Same thing here. Did it on my computer using Procreate. That one I did when I was teaching. I was showing the kids how to work with planes in space and referring to the piece of paper as a plane, but then also putting that plane in space. A photograph could be put in a surface, even though this is two-dimensional, it's what you see. Uh, that was a self-portrait I did. Uh, start out as a drawing, then it went to a used it on the computer this is one of, again from imagination imagination i did with procreate if you're interested let me know these are all for sale this is done on procreate you can see that you know your imagination can wander uh you can do a lot on the on the with procreate and uh have a ball Let's see, what else do I got left? I might have a couple, one more. Oh, these are some art prints. Might be some of the same stuff, but I'll, there were ones that I wanted to share. That one, I think, yeah, that one's been sold. We sold that at, that's a drawing, pencil drawing. That one, I sold a, a 16 by 20 at, at art. A showcase Colette had a uh, sale for us one year I think it was for Christmas or Valentine's this started out as a as a watercolor painting and then progressed to what I did on procreate so this is a watercolor painting that I brought into procreate and this is what I ended up changing it to uh, this was done on a whiteboard in class I just took a picture of it same thing on a whiteboard. This is that church picture I showed you that I played with on Procreate. This one I think still might be available. Or I might have sold it. This one is a watercolor, but using a uh, scan. Oh, yeah. Took a picture of it. It's a print. So those. There's all that stuff right there. Let's see what else I got left here. Oh, photographs, my thing of photographs. Again, I'm talking for a long time, but hopefully somebody's out there listening. Might run into it one day and say, oh, gee, I like this. Uh, this is available as a print. Uh, I have a big one out of this, about 36 inches by 36 inches by something in a frame. These are available in a, in a, in a, in a frame photograph. This was a still life that I photographed and then did a painting of it. These are all photographs uh, available. They all have a story that's in our front yard, front yard. Uh, this was at a garden show uh, a while back, Colette and the Greeley Art Association uh, asked some of us to paint at the show and also 
get some local musicians to paint a play. And, and that's this. I have this as a print. This was that same church I worked on, but just a little bit different. And you can see Old Town 2012. That's when I first took the pictures. This, I can't remember where it's at, but I, I know it's probably on my film someplace. Oh, yeah, we went to uh, go see the uh, Mount Rushmore. And we went through the buffalo uh, pastures and stuff. This, these mushrooms I took a picture of were from France. And uh, these are in France. We went there to Bray, Pierre Bray. Uh, for the 442 Brigade uh, help liberate them. This is a Matisse's, Matisse? Monet's, looking out of Monet's window in, in uh, France. We went there, and some of these I thought I put more information, but again, it looks like I didn't. Might be on my site. But that photo is available. That was on a cruise we went on. The Caribbean someplace. Off of Florida. When we were in Paris, we ate up there. This is a chicken that I took a picture of and I'm planning on doing a painting. Also be cool for a stained glass. This one was in India when we first went to India. And I sold... My first photo online on Etsy when I first retired and started Etsy. So these photos are available. This was at the Lion uh, Monument at the, here in Kersey. Kersey? Not Kersey. Uh, oh, I'm sure you know where it is here in, in Greeley. Not Greeley, but west, north, south. Kingsburg, maybe. This is also a photo I shot. These are all for sale. Think you're interested? Let me know. And this last works I have is a collection of uh, stuff, too. This is some of the engravings that I do. Uh, a lot of practicing engravings. These are what they call uh, practice pieces. And so you can see the detail. You can zoom in if, if you know you wanted to. These are all plast practice plates on steel. I made Gail a money clip with their name on it. These are uh, rubies that I bought at one of the rock shows. They're hand cut rubies, so they're real irregular. This is a gold inlay. I was practicing how to do gold inlay. This is copper inlay. Copper inlay, and then I engraved over the copper. Again, this is a practice engraving on a gun. Um, that's down at Colette's. That's a uh, friend. This is gold inlay. Money clip. This is a ring that I did for Gail. And these are all the different practice plates that I did. It's an engraving on a, on a, a replica. That money clip I talked about earlier. Uh, this is engraved on brass. Looks like gold. This is ring was all hand forged. I took my scrap silver, mounted it down, and then 
hand forges from an ingot and then it's with and everything and then engraved it. First learning how to engrave. Uh, one of my first knives that I engraved, another one I engraved. That one knife you saw down at Colette's. This one is one that I engraved that I really liked. And uh, these are examples of engraving that are on uh, Pinterest. I posted mine on Pinterest. So these are all been sold, but if you want one, I can engrave you one. So that said, might be one little, I haven't looked at these in a long time. So this, this shows you that I went to a GIA, uh, took a lot of their classes online. And uh, these are some drawings that I did. And these are stuff that I sold and I made back when I was teaching at Valley High School. Uh, sold them pretty cheap because silver at that time was maybe six, seven bucks. Silver has gone up to, I think, $21, $24. The pendant turquoise I got from Tonopah that I tumbled. Sold that and some I gave to friends. Uh, that was an idea if you were interested. I could do that for you. This I made, I cut out at the senior center. You can go down there and uh, learn how to do that. I uh, can't think of the guy's name right there, right now that teaches it, but he's pretty good. He's a retired industrial arts teacher also. And these are all stones that I cabbed over the years and, and all these have been sold. A lot of fun. Uh, did this at the, uh, Senior Center. That's just a sketch that I worked out. Money clip I showed you. The lady that bought that. Bunch of different copper bracelets that I made and sold. That one's Gail's right there. She wears it once in a while. Uh, copper ring that I, I forged and I showed you. And then this is all stuff that I posted on Facebook. That's that brass one I showed you working on in my vise. The Malach Malachite, uh, I had a bunch of that that I cut out and did cabochons and uh, since sold it. This is a triplet that I'm telling you about. The ones that I have, there's a, there's a black piece of material on the bottom and then a thin sliver of the uh, quartz and then uh, right in between you can barely see it that top is the quartz right in there that thin sliver is the actual opal sandwiched under a black you can kind of see it right there it's a thin part and that's the quartz over the top uh, it's i'm selling it very affordable otherwise an opal lightning ridge opal that big very expensive. Uh, let's see. I have, oh, you might see uh, this goes to Pinterest. These are some examples that are on Pinterest. There's one showing you the idea of a triplet. And if you go look online, you see how expensive they are. You can even look on Facebook and you'll see that this stuff is expensive. So I'm selling it. You know, cost. This, there's another one of these available down at Art Showcase. So maybe after Christmas, you want to go down there and pick one up. Uh, Gail made this. This is washi beads that she made in Okinawa. They're wood pieces that are coated with a washi paper and uh, beads. And then these are five yen coins. That one since sold. This is two rings I made for a friend back when I was teaching at Valley High School. And a piece of turquoise that I set, the rope setting, bezel, cabochon. This was an Australian opal solid that I bartered for when I was, I was making jewelry for, uh, oh, 
What's their name? They had a rock shop outside of LaSalle, Krieger, Krieger. And I used to get my rocks down there. They taught me a little bit about lapidary, a lot about lapidary. And I bought Lee Stone. One time they asked me if uh, I could make the ring a specific size, like an 8x10 cab uh, or the size for a, a belt buckle. Uh, a, 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 where they could cut their stone and put it inside. That's what the story is on that one. And this is my friend with them on her finger, and she still has them after all these years. And uh, I'm surprised because a couple of years ago, about five years ago, they got robbed in Oakland. And uh, she still has these. They didn't st steal a lot of stuff. Eddie lost all his guns. They stole them. These were copper bracelets I made. I think I, I sold this one. I still have this one. And this one, I, it's down at Colette's, I think. Or I might have it laying around. This is just a close-up of the CZs I set. And this is uh, di diachroic glass. And I since it dropped that and broke it. Uh, this one I sold. That's another opal uh, triplet. It's it's gone. This is a close of it, up of it. Me setting it in the bezel. Um, a lot of people set these in a prong, but they're very susceptible to get damaged. You, they're better as a triplet, and they're usually better for a pendant. And you saw these. This ring was one of the first ones I made. I told you I forged it out of scrap silver. And then the stones, I got them at a, at a rock uh, show in Denver. And they were real rubies. And I doubted it. And I tried drilling through one of them because I didn't like the way it was set. And I, I couldn't drill through it. And ruby, rubies carburetor, they're pretty hard. And that one, since uh, I redid it, and I never finished it again. I wore it for a while. Scrap. That was a scrap that I used to forge some of the stuff. And you can see some of the rings I had made and, and melted down and poured in these ingots. And uh, this was some castings that I did with uh, Ken Norris. And then I set the stones in them and added that. Oh, no, I think the bale was in the casting. So we made the gambit. This is all the stuff. This I made for Kimmy. It was a CZ. Uh, recycled it. Been sold. Been sold. I think this one's been sold. Gone. Gone. Sold. Sold. This was some experimenting that I, I was working on setting stones and uh, casting, sold, traded. This, I took it apart, but this was a pretty cool pendant, all shells from Hawaii. Uh, turquoise that I sent sold, I picked it up in a Tonopah, and this was stones that I tumbled. And then uh, a few years back, a guy was coming through and bought all my loose stones. This one since been sold. Uh, still have that one. That's a uh, crystal phase stone, copper. Uh, sold that. This was a commission work. I sold it. Give you an idea that next to a coin. Uh, some of the engraving on back, and then I, I labeled them the size of it. Of the rock sold. Sold. It's one of the bracelets you see me forging it. Okay, I think that's about it there. So I have a lot of fun showing my stuff. And also, I have a web page. So if you go to the web page and you want to see more about uh, something like this, you just click on it. It'll open up the page. I'll show you some stuff that I put together. 
promoting my artwork. And you, you can zoom through it, go through it fast uh, at your leisure. Some of the stuff's also on Facebook. And uh, another link that I have that you might be interested in, uh, when you go back here, where it says it's Jewelry Showcase, I can get you stuff at wholesale if I make something for you. And uh, like if you want a nice chain, uh, you want a sterling silver chain. One friend of mine wanted a gold uh, amulet for diabetic. Uh, these are the quarter pricings on there. I get a wholesale price. Uh, one of the things I got a friend, let's see if I can find it. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Anyway, you get the idea. You can come on here and you can search wedding bands, engraving, mountings, bindings, metals, tools. Uh, that's my number. So, like, uh, let's see, findings. I usually make all my own findings. But these are findings you can buy, chains you can buy. Gold's expensive, but if you want, you can always check with me. I might be able to get you a good deal. Uh, these chains, uh, that's a big chain. These are all big chains. Uh, see if I can go back and see uh, charms. See if this works. So these are charms that are out there. Uh, try it medical. No, it didn't work. Okay, that's what came up. I actually I did one of these for a friend. I bartered. His was an 18 inch cake. He bought it. Uh, he bought it. I think he said 30 years ago. And today you can see what the chain cost. And I engraved this pendant for him front and back. Uh, Anyway, I, I babbled a lot. If anybody is out there watching or sees it, drop me a note. See, you know, so I know that uh, somebody's looking. And uh, this is my webpage. And I don't really have much here, but it seems like a lot when you're when you're looking at it this way. And then this is another webpage of mine that. You see some artwork out there, you can get it on demand. This was another thing I did on the computer over the years. These are all uh, self-portraits that I did. And uh, you can pick stuff that you want. This, this watercolor has since sold the original, but let's say you wanted to buy something like this and you wanted it as wall art, you can pick on here and then you can go down and you could pick the, the frame that you want. So example, <coughs> you click on here and you want a, a frame print. Come over here and you could pick, that's the size you can see how it look under different conditions. You can buy that frame. Let's say you want to see what it looked like on your mantle. That's what it looks like. Let's say you wanted it bigger. Let's say you want a 30 by 22. 
Now that's the price if you buy it from them online. If you buy it from me, uh, I can save you maybe 25%. But this one again, you see what it looks like that size on a couch, by a sofa, on a wall. Uh, you can get it as just a canvas print and the canvas print just stretch bars. Uh, and I love doing this because I just, you know, 